Dear friends, welcome back. I am Dr. Arpita Roy Choudhury, Managing Partner and Principal Scientist at Data Analysis Tools Berlin and Visiting Scientist at the Humboldt University of Berlin, Germany. We already met last time and discussed about the alpha amino acids, their structure, classification, and general properties. Today, we will continue to learn a bit more about the alpha amino acids with the focus on physiological importance of essential and non-essential amino acids. We shall together at first have a recapitulation of the introduction to the amino acids. Thereafter, we shall learn about how they are categorized, followed by description and importance of essential and non-essential amino acids. At the end, a quick summary of what we learned and the mention of references and suggested resources for further readings. Amino acids, often referred to as the building blocks of proteins, are compounds that may play many critical roles in our body, as very aptly put by the famous scientist Francis Crick during his Nobel lecture in 1962 for the discovery of DNA, where he states that it is one of the more striking realizations of biochemistry, which surprisingly is hardly ever mentioned in the biochemical textbooks, that the 20 amino acids and the four bases are, with minor reservations, the same throughout the nature. All of the proteins on the face of Earth are made up of 20 common alpha amino acids which are joined by long chains called polypeptide chains. Amino acids are the starting material for the myriad assortment of proteins found in all living organisms. I really like this bright and colorful illustration on our right hand side of the slide where we can see different structures and arrangement of amino acids leading to proteins and complexes. So imagine a science textbook without images, no charts, graphs, or illustrations, no diagrams, arrows, levels. The science would be a lot harder to understand, isn't it? This illustration really depicts the structures of different types of proteins and complexes, all made from the same amino acids but with minor changes in their arrangement. And this minor change leads to major changes and differences in their structures and functions. Ain't nature the best architect? So apart from building proteins, amino acids are also necessary for hormones and neurotransmitters. Last time, we learned amino acids are also classified into essential and non-essential categories. So on what basis are amino acids divided into essential and non-essential categories? What is the difference between essential and non-essential amino acids? How do they work differently with the body? And why is each type necessary for us? In today's discussion, we will try to go through these points and gain insight into the biochemistry of amino acids. Nutritionists divide amino acids into two groups, essential amino acids, which must be in the diet because cells cannot synthesize them, and non-essential amino acids, which can be made by the cells. This classification of amino acid has little to do with the structure of amino acids, which we talked a lot last time. Essential amino acids vary considerably from one organism to another and even differ in humans, depending on whether they are adults or children. Of the 20 amino acids, nine are known to be essential amino acids and 11 are non-essential amino acids. From only these nine essential and 11 non-essential amino acids, the body is able to generate many thousands of unique proteins with different functions. Although 11 of the amino acids are non-essential, humans may require some of them if they are under stress or have an illness to be taken from outside. During these times, the body may not be able to make 
enough of these amino acids to keep up with the increased demand. These amino acids are conditional, which means that a person may require them in certain situations. Conditionally, essential amino acids are only essential under special circumstances like illness. People may sometimes wish to take essential amino acid supplements. It is best to seek the advice of a doctor first regarding the safety and doses of these amino acids. Before we go in detail of the sources, roles, and eventually learn the physiological importance of essential and non-essential amino acids, I feel it is important to see how these are metabolized in the body. Let us have a quick look at the metabolic pathways with a focus on catabolism because the amino acids need to be broken down to be able to be absorbed by the body for sustaining its life processes. As we already know, we categorize amino acids as essential or non-essential based on whether or not an organism can synthesize them. All of the amino acids, however, can be broken down by all organisms. They are, in fact, a source of energy for cells, particularly during the times of starvation or for people on diets containing very low amounts of carbohydrates. From a perspective of breakdown, that is catabolism, amino acids are categorized as glucogenic if they produce intermediates that can be made into glucose or ketogenic if their intermediates are made into acetyl-CoA. The figure on the left lists the glucogenic and ketogenic amino acids. Also note that some amino acids are both glucogenic and ketogenic. The figure on our right shows the metabolic fates of catabolism of each of the amino acids. Catabolism of amino acids carbon skeletons result in the formation of seven products, pyruvate, acetyl-CoA, acetoacetyl-CoA, alpha-clitoglutarate, succinyl-CoA, fumarate, and oxaloacetate. They have a different fate in the energy metabolism. The strategy of the cell is to convert amino acid carbon skeleton to compounds which could be useful in glucogenous neogenesis or a molecule of lipids, for example, fatty acids and ketone bodies. An important general consideration in amino acid metabolism is that of transamination. In this process, an exchange of amine and oxygen between an amino acid and an alpha keto acid occurs. I am not going into detail of different metabolic pathways involved as that would be an altogether different topic to be covered. But since we are studying about physiological importance, so it is interesting to know how they are absorbed in the body. And in this process, it is also nice to brush up a bit of the basic concepts which are interlinked. So just in case you would like to know more of something, feel free to consult the further readings or just feel free to write me or comment on the sections below. As we know, non-essential amino acids are synthesized in the body. It is interesting hence to see their metabolic pathways and how these amino acids depend on each other for the synthesis. In the figure here, we can see the interconnected pathways of non-essential amino acid metabolism. Glutamine and glutamate have a central role in non-essential amino acid metabolism and can be used for the synthesis of other non-essential amino acids. Glutamate can be utilized to generate alanine, aspartate, 
serine, and proline. Aspartate is further utilized to generate asparagine with nitrogen from glutamine and can be used in the urea cycle to make arginine. Serine donates a methyl groups for one carbon metabolism and makes glycine in the process. Serine can also be used in the transsulfuration pathway to generate cysteine. Tyrosine is the only non-essential amino acid not directly connected to others as it is separately synthesized from phenylalanine. Coming back to the essential amino acids, the category of essential amino acids include all those that our bodies are unable to synthesize autonomously, specifically their carbon chain, and which we are therefore obliged to acquire through our diet. In order for the protein synthesis to proceed as it should, the relative concentrations of the essential amino acids must be optimal. If there is a lack of even one of these, the protein synthesis becomes ineffective in the worst case, or in any case less efficient than it has potential to be. As we already know, our body needs 20 different amino acids to grow and function properly. Though all 20 of these are important for our health, only 9 amino acids are classified as essential. These are phenylalanine, leucine, isoleucine, valine, lysine, methionine, histidine, threonine, and tryptophan. Unlike non-essential amino acids, essential amino acids can't be made by our body and must be obtained through our diet. So now the big question is, how do we make sure that we are meeting our body's amino acid requirements through our diet? The answer is surprisingly simple enough. All we have to do is to eat a recommended amount of protein each day and consume a variety of whole grains and foods. The best sources of essential amino acids are animal proteins, like eggs, meat, and poultry. Foods that contain all nine essential amino acids are referred to as complete proteins. Complete protein sources include meat, seafood, poultry, eggs, and dairy products. As we can see in the list mentioned, Animal proteins are called complete proteins because they naturally contain all nine essential amino acids in each serving. But what about those of us who don't want to eat meat? What could be our options for this? Well, soy, quinoa, and buckwheat are plant-based foods that contain all nine essential amino acids, making them a complete protein source as well. Other foods are characterized by a greater or lesser deficiency of some of these amino acids, such as foods from plant sources. It should be clarified here that meat, dairy products, and eggs also contain a limiting amino acid, namely methionine or tryptophan. The concentration of which still reaches sufficient levels to ensure protein synthesis, however. As such, adding grains and legumes to our diet could be a winning move to get the most from our protein synthesis and could even improve it. Of course, this only applies if we have a healthy and balanced diet with proper exercise and training followed by. However, if you are following a plant-based diet, you can still ensure proper intake of all essential amino acids as long as you eat a variety of plant proteins each day. In any case, it is not necessary to consume the complementary proteins within the same meal because the body has a endogenous reserves, which means an intrinsic amino acid pool to cover any specific deficiencies. 
however you choose to nourish your body, whether with a non-vegetarian or vegetarian diet, make sure that your diet is rich in whole foods and plant life. In doing so, you can be sure that your body is receiving a full amino acid profile and therefore is primed to thrive. Although these amino acids cannot be produced in the body, yet they are critical for a staggering range of physiological functions. The nine essential amino acids perform a number of important and varied jobs in our body. So now let's have a look at the individual essential amino acids and their physiological importance. First one, phenylalanine. Phenylalanine is a nonpolar amino acid involved in the formation of the most common food proteins. It is also the main constituent of aspartame, a sweetener used in the food industry, especially in carbonated beverages. Its concentration in the blood is indirectly linked to the sensation of hunger by lowering serotonin levels leading to an increase in food cravings. Finally, it has a melanin synthesis inhibition function that is responsible for the hypopigmentation of hair, skin, and the iris, the blonde hair and blue eyes that we see. The US recommended daily allowance per 2.2 pounds, that is one kg of body weight for the phenylalanine is 33 milligrams. Leucine. Like valine, leucine is a branched chain amino acid that is critical for protein synthesis and muscle repair. It also helps regulate blood sugar levels, stimulates wound healing, and produces growth hormones. Daily allowance per 2.2 pounds of body weight for leucine is 42 milligrams. Isoleucine. Isoleucine is one of the three branch chain amino acids. It helps to increase the rate of protein synthesis and promotes muscle tissue formation. Additionally, isoleucine is known to enhance glucose consumption, intestinal development, and immune function. Although many studies have looked at branch chain amino acids as a whole rather than a single amino acid. This means that leucine and valine, both also amino acids essentially needed for the body, may share these benefits as well. Daily allowance per one kilo of body weight of isoleucine is 19 milligrams. Valine. Valine is also a branch chain amino acid, meaning it has a chain branching off to one side of its molecular structure. We already had discussed these molecular structures in our last talk. Valine helps stimulate muscle growth and regeneration and is involved in energy production. Daily allowance of valine for one kg of body weight is 24 milligrams. Fifth essential amino acid is lysine. Lysine has an important part to play in cell division and growth as it is a major building block of growth factors. Accelerated wound healing using lysine-based salutes leads to less scar tissue formation, while sites that receive little oxygen and nutrients that are directly injected with growth factors benefit from angiogenesis or the development of new blood vessels around the injection site. Furthermore, lysine contributes to fat metabolism as well. It is also helpful for the production of L-carnitine. It's a composition of collagen and fixes calcium in our bones. Lysine deficiency can lead to anemia, impaired fatty acid metabolism, slow wound healing, lower muscle mass, and the production of defective connective tissues. However, high levels can also create problems such as neurological disturbances in our body. 
Daily allowance per 1 kg of body weight for lysine is 38 milligrams. Coming to methionine, methionine plays an important role in metabolism and detoxification. It also is necessary for tissue growth and the absorption of zinc and selenium, which are vital minerals for body growth. Methionine is also known to help in synthesis of cysteine, carnitine, lecithine, and phosphatidylcholine and acts as a powerful acidifier in urine. Daily allowance per 1 kg of body weight of methionine is 19 mg. Histidine. Histidine is used to produce histamine, a neurotransmitter that is vital for immune response, digestion, and sleep-wake cycles. It is a part of many enzymatic processes as well as the formation of red and white blood cells. It is a precursor of histamine, a molecule involved in inflammatory processes used in allergenic treatments and acts as a vasodilator and seems to have positive effects in sports in terms of stamina. It is critical for maintaining the myelin sheath a protective barrier that surrounds our nerve cell. As we can already see, it is one of the very important amino acids for sustaining the life processes in our body. The daily allowance for one kg of body weight for histidine is 14 milligrams. Second last and the eighth amino acid essential for our body is threonine. Threonine is a principal part of structural proteins such as collagen and elastin, which are important components of the skin and connective tissues. It also plays a role in fat metabolism and immune function. Threonine affects vitamin B12 formation processes, promotes digestion, and also lowers blood cholesterol levels by preventing liver diseases such as so-called fatty liver. At the level of tissues, it promotes the regeneration of collagen proteins and elastin. It's used in sporting context as the primary function of preventing tendon and muscle injuries. Daily allowance per one kg of body weight for threonine is 20 milligrams. Coming to the last and final essential amino acid, tryptophan. It is the precursor of serotonin, a neurotransmitter, and melatonin, substances that regulate sleep and waking patterns. And because of this peculiarity, it has been used both in drugs to induce sleep and as an antidepressant. In the world of strength and endurance-based sports, it is used to increase tolerance to pain, while in precision sports, it increases the concentrations obtained from supplements. The daily recommended dose per 1 kg body weight for tryptophan is 5 milligrams. As we can already see by now, that essential amino acids are at the core of many vital processes. Though amino acids are most recognized for their role in muscle development and repair, the body depends on them for so much more than that. That is why essential amino acid deficiencies can negatively impact our entire body, including our nervous, reproductive, immune, and digestive systems. A lack of each of the nine essential amino acids brings about different disorders that can in turn lead to occurrence of pathological diseases. To begin with the first amino acid here, let's say lysine. Those who suffer from the deficiency of lysine can have problems with anemia, hair loss, loss of appetite, and in severe cases, even pellagra which is a disease 
that manifests itself with diarrhea and dermatitis and can also lead to anemia. Deficiency of methionine. Methionine, if insufficient quantities present in the body, can cause an accumulation of fat in the liver. Histidine. In humans, dietary histidine may be associated with factors that improve metabolic syndrome and has an effect on iron absorption. Tryptophan. A deficit of tryptophan can lead to insomnia, depression, and anxiety. Sudden and unexplained weight gain or weight loss may signal a need for greater tryptophan intake for the body. Threonine. A lack of threonine can lead to skin problems and general weakness of the body. Phenylalanine. Deficiency of phenylalanine has consequences such as skin lesions, edema, slow growth, and weakness. Leucine. A deficiency of leucine causes a decrease in lean body mass due to high muscle catabolism. Isoleucine. A deficit of isoleucine causes symptoms similar to that of hypoglycemia or dizziness, headaches, weakness, irritability, fatigue, and depression. A deficit of valine, which is a branched-chain amino acid, is known to have indirect effects of neurological brain disorders. So, in summary, we can see that we can say that essential amino acids are not only important for physical development of the body, but also for mental health. It is quite crucial. So, of the nine essential amino acids which we must get through our diet, they perform very, very varied and vital roles in the body. They are involved in important processes such as tissue growth, energy production, immune function, and nutrient absorption. They are vital for functions such as protein synthesis, tissue repair, and nutrient absorption. Now, Let's learn about the non-essential amino acids. Non-essential amino acids. I have put this cross here on top of the non word as to me it appears to be a sort of misnomer in nutritional sciences to call it non-essential. So like, don't let their name fool you. Non-essential amino acids perform very essential roles in the body. Non-essential amino acids support tissue growth and repair, immune function, red blood cell formation, and hormone synthesis, to name a few. However, unlike essential amino acids, a healthy body can create these proteins if enough protein sources with essential amino acids are ingested. There are 11 non-essential amino acids, which are alanine, arginine, asparagine, aspartic acid, cysteine, glutamic acid, glutamine, glycine, proline, serine, and tyrosine. Typically, our body will be able to synthesize these amino acids. However, if we are stressed, sick, or not consuming enough protein, and carbohydrates, our body might not be able to produce enough of them. These are called conditionally essential amino acids. The conditional amino acids are arginine, glutamine, tyrosine, cysteine, glycine, proline, serine, and aspergine. Most of the non-essential amino acids are produced from glucose. Of course, they are also found in the diet, in both plants and animal foods. Benefits of non-essential amino acids produced by the body, de novo, are likewise as broad as those of the essential group. While these amino acids are produced from scratch, dietary sources can increase availability and so provide a more reliable and consistent effect. They are very important for the production of proteins 
and many other bodily functions. They support tissue growth and repair. They support immune function, red blood cell formation, and hormone synthesis. Let us now have a look at the physiological role and importance of individual non-essential amino acids. To start with, let's say glycine. Glycine is the simplest amino acid and its calming action improves sleep and reduces reward-seeking behaviors. It can be synthesized through collagen degradation and is the primary ingredient of collagen. It is beneficial for wound healing. It acts as a neurotransmitter. The side effect of high level of glycine in the body is that it may cause fatigue. Glycine may play a role in the way cancer develops and spreads in the body. Alanine. Alanine plays an important role in the production and conversion of glucose to energy. It lies at the central hub of carbon metabolism, being synthesized by alanine aminotransferases. Some people take alanine supplements when their blood sugar level drops to keep it from falling too low. It removes toxic substances released from breakdown of muscle protein during intensive exercise. Side effects of alanine include that when there is an excessive alanine level in the body, it is associated with chronic fatigue. Arginine. Arginine is categorized as a conditionally essential amino acid in newborns and a non-essential amino acid in rest of the human population. Arginine is one of the most common ingredients in polypeptides and proteins and assists to ensure a healthy immune system through increased T cell production. Arginine plays an important role in releasing hormones, cell division, wound healing, functioning of the immune system, removal of ammonia from the body, to name a few. It can help treat angina, coronary artery disease, clogged arteries, peripheral vascular diseases, etc. Asparagin, besides being important to the function and structure of proteins, asparagin is quite required for development and function of the brain. It also plays an important role in the synthesis of ammonia. It helps promote equilibrium in the central nervous system and aids in balancing the state of emotion. Too little could lead to symptoms that include headaches, depression, irritability, mental confusion, and psychosis. There is usually no need to supplement asparagine. Asparagine may play a role in the way cancer develops and spreads in our body. Aspartic acid. Aspartic acid works within the citric acid and urea cycles and is a precursor to the amino acids. What is more, it is also an excretory brain stem and spinal cord neurotransmitter that increases the chance of su successful postsynaptic membrane depolarization. Its inhibitory partner is the amino acid glycine. Both of these non-essential amino acids must be in balance to be of benefit to the central nervous system. Aspartic acid is the precursor to several important amino acids, including four essential amino acids, namely methionine, threonine, isoleucine, and lysine. The body can synthesize aspartic acid from oxaloacetate, and supplementing is usually not necessary. Aspartate is the conjugate base of aspartic acid. It is formed by the removal of a proton. Aspartate stimulates NMDA receptors associated to the neurotransmitter glutamate, but it does not do so as strongly as glutamate does. Cysteine. Cysteine has several important functions. 
including being a precursor to glutathione, which is an antioxidant. There is a possibility that cysteine supplements may reduce the severity of hangover and liver damage associated with the alcohol consumption, if you remember the movie of Bradley Cooper, Hangover. Cysteine is a component of a protein type abundant in nails, skin, and hair, and has synergetic effect when taken with other antioxidants, such as vitamin C and selenium. However, excessive amounts may cause symptoms that include dizziness, drowsiness, and weakness. Excess levels of cysteine may heighten the risk of vascular diseases in the coronary, cerebral, and peripheral vessels. Proline. An important function of proline is the production of proteins like collagen and cartilage. The human body can naturally synthesize proline from glutamate. There is usually no need to supplement proline. It is the only amino acid where the side chains are connected to the protein backbone twice. Proline also plays role in intracellular signaling. Glutamine. Glutamine is an amino acid involved in various important bodily functions. This includes synthesis of proteins, synthesis of lipids, and it reduces complications during sickle cell anemia, transports and eliminates ammonia from the body, maintaining acid-base balance of the bodily fluids. It is also necessary for the synthesis of nucleotides, DNA and RNA molecules and acts as a source of energy for many cells. Glutamic acid. Glutamic acid, when ingested by humans, can help drop a hydrogen atom and become glutamate after it is in the body. Among other functions, glutamate acts as a neurotransmitter associated with learning, memory, language, and speech. It is also known as nature's brain food. It helps in healing of ulcers, controls sugar, craving, and controls schizophrenia, among other functions. Serine. Serine is necessary for the transfer of methyl groups within the body and therefore is necessary for the production of substances such as creatine, epinephrine, DNA, and RNA. It is also a precursor to nucleotides and phospholipids and the neurotransmitter glycine and deserine which are important to the brain and nervous system. It has also been associated with breast cancer cell growth. It aids in the synthesis of immune system proteins. It is also good for muscle growth. Some people take serine as a treatment for amyotropic lateral sclerosis, commonly known as ALS in the abbreviated form. Although results are limited, other conditions that people utilize serine to treat include fibromyalgia, chronic fatigue syndrome, Parkinson's disease, and Alzheimer's disease. Tyrosine. Tyrosine is an amino acid that, besides being important to synthesizing proteins, also acts as a precursor to the very important neuro transmitter dopamine, which is converted to norepinephrine and then to epinephrine. Tyrosine supplements can improve cognition, increase energy, reduce anxiety, reduce depression, and reduce the pain levels. To be safe, hyperthyroidism, 
sufferers should avoid tyrosine. There is a chance it could raise thyroid levels to even higher. So by now we can see that far beyond simply being 11 of the 20 amino acids needed for protein synthesis, non-essential amino acids play numerous important roles in physiological functions. As we proceed towards the conclusion of today's topic, rest, let's recapitulate what we have learned today. You may pause. Let's now summarize and have a recap of what we have learned today through these questions that I made and put up here for your practice. As I said, you may pause in this video here and try to find the answers to the questions given here. To conclude, I would like to say that amino acid research is ongoing and their full range of functions are still largely unknown, as is the ability of amino acids to work as a group or within a complete system. An optimal amino acid balance in the diet is crucial, but on the whole insufficiently understood. So it is impossible to publish solid guidelines. Dietary supplements of functional amino acids like arginine, cysteine, glutamine, leucine, proline, and tryptophan have shown to be beneficial for a wide range of health-related disorders during every life stage from fetal to geriatric populations. Furthermore, amino acids are consumed by sports enthusiasts and athletes to increase muscle mass and reduce fat buildup. However, cognitive side effects and kidney damage have been reported in association with amino acid supplementation. Over the course of time, it will be exciting to observe the creative approaches that researchers develop to overcome these challenges. Here are the resources that I consulted while preparing the study material. You may go through these for further studies regarding this topic. So this is about our topic today on physiological importance of essential and non-essential amino acids. But before I leave, I would like to share a very funny video with you. So I would like that let's uh, all of us have a look at the video first and then we talk a little bit about
PDF. Is it not funny? So one afternoon, I came across this video for showing it to my children. We adore this movie, Or Me the Pig. It's animated, funny, and a hit with multiple ages. In case you are not familiar, Ormi is a pig who spots a jar of cookies on the top of the fridge. The cookies are just out of reach and Ormi very much wants those cookies. He tries a wide variety of problem solving techniques, including catapults, trampolines, and even jumping out of the airplane. We were amazed by the dedication and determination of this little piglet to accomplish his mission. Even though till the end of the video, this guy doesn't succeed, but I'm sure he isn't going to give up till he takes the cookies out of the jar. We counted and amazingly, we found out that he tried 16 different problem solving approaches. I mean, 16. So how amazing and incredible is that? I find this to be very relevant analogy in science. And when I get to interact with colleagues from industry and academia, both in scientific research, we all agree that in scientific research, we encounter the problem of failed experiments. By failed experiments, I mean the experiments which do not lead to the desired results to support our hypothesis but they do serve a major purpose indeed. They teach us what not to do next, which strategies not to be repeated. So next time we would strike out those experimental parameters and conditions and narrow down our approaches. Isn't that fascinating how this little pig tries a trick, doesn't succeed, and yet again, he is so flexible and develops a new stance to the problem. So I leave you with this positive thought and especially to the master students who would like to take up fundamental research in future that it is important to be resilient towards our goals and not to give up just because something is challenging. All the best to each of you and thanks for being here. Feel free to write me or comment below if you have any query. Thanks again.